Hello, friends. Um, warm welcome and a happy morning and a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for attending today's uh, wisdom sharing session. So today we are on the day four of uh, fifth week. So today we are going to discuss uh, something about a uh, few of the case studies uh, with regards to spiritual tablets and how concepts of spiritual tablets have brought changes in uh, many people's life and how meditation has helped them to overcome whatever the situation that they were going through, whether it's your physical pain or the relationship issues or in whole. There are many case studies, but today I want to emphasize on one case study, which was very, I was very emotionally uh, touched with when I heard her story. And I want each and every one of us, all, you also to see how she transformed her life and how she went through her life and how she applied uh, the concepts of forgiveness, gratitude, and mended her life from where she was before and how she is now right now. So this is a beautiful case study of one of the patient gods. So please, I'll share my screen. Thank you. Yes. So this is a case study of one of the patient gods on how she went through her life from being uh, oppression to suppression to empowerment. This is a this is the one thing that uh, would speak about her life, whatever she went through. So the, our patient god, she is about 36 years old and uh, she's a housewife. She hails from a upper middle class family and uh, her husband is 45 years old and uh, he has a real estate business. And uh, she has two kids, both boys, 20 and 18 years old. They all stay uh, together in Andhra Pradesh. Now the patient god started meditating since 2014 August. And uh, patient god's father, uh, he was a uh, MA gold medalist and he worked as an auditor. And our mother is a housewife. And uh, patient god has two siblings, two younger brothers. Now coming to the life history of patient god, her childhood, her adolescent stage and everything. So as a child, patient God grew up in a very controlled environment. There was a very strict upbringing by her father. There were a lot of rules and restrictions. Her father was an authoritarian figure and uh, he showed a very tough love towards her. And her mother was very caring, but she was very submissive to her father. All the decisions, her life choices, everything were taken care by her father. She never had any choice in whatever things that she wanted in her life. And uh, if, to an extent that patient God was never allowed to go outside, even to play with her best of friends also. And uh, for that also, she had to take permission from her father. Otherwise, there would be a lot of uh, distress. And uh, even though she tried to show some kind of, uh, what do you say, interest or some kind of a opinion towards something, her father used to brush it up away. And he was very un unwilling to listen what she was telling. So like that, where patient got, you know, patient got grew up with a lot of fear. There was a lot of pent up emotion. Her intellect was never uh, developed because she didn't know what is right, what is wrong. She was going with uh, someone else's decisions in her life. And there was a lot of suppression with the choices that she was supposed to make with respect to her family traditions and belief systems. So, uh, but with her brothers, she had a really good emotional bonding. Both of, uh, all three of them used to have a nice time together. They used to play together and everything. But when her father was there in and around them, there was a lot of uh, discomfort in the air. There was a fear, a pseudo or a pretentious behavior. So due to her lack of exposure towards the outside world or the society, she naturally had a very subdued lifestyle because she thought that this is how everyone is dealing with their day-to-day -day life. This is how life is going to be. So she had that kind of an understanding. And uh, she thought this is life and that's how we should go on. So. She went on with what other people were, uh, you know, she went on with her life with what other people were choosing for her. And that was happening since the beginning of her childhood. And eventually when she came to 15 years old, when she just finished her 10th standard, her father decided to get her married to one of her uh, cousins. Uh, he was a son of her uh, maternal uncle. So she... No, you know, she didn't say anything. She was never uh, asked for, uh, you know, they were obviously she never was given a choice and neither she did. They didn't, uh, they asked for her yes or no opinion. They just decided and she was supposed to get married. 
so she also did not give any choices because she didn't understand what was happening with her she was just 15 years old and she also thought if she would say something her father will be angry so she just accepted it and uh, she didn't she hardly met her, her future husband once or twice and uh, that's it she re- vaguely remembers it and finally they got married now life after marriage now the patient got she came to know her husband he never liked to get he never wanted in the beginning itself he never wanted to get married to her because he was uh, much worried because they were first cousins and uh, he was worried about uh, this consanguinity in marriage that might result in uh, you know birth defects in the kids that are born when there is a marriage between two first cousins so he was worried in that way and um, later way, much later she came to know about this and her husband told her that uh, you know he was not at all interested in marriage but somehow her ma- father you know uh, forced her Uh, forced i mean forced him to get married and said that nothing like that will happen now her marriage after her marriage she started to live with her in-laws family there was a jo- there was there was a very big joint family there were about 20 people in the house and her mother-in-law and father-in-law everyone was very affectionate towards her and uh, her brother-in-law and sister-in-law were not much in with her there was a lot of friction since the beginning and they always used to make some or the other complaint with respect to her to her husband now emotionally at that time when she got married there was a lot of restrictions and re- reservations in her uh, mother in law's uh, father in law's house because um this was a huge family there was a lot of uh, you know old belief systems and everything but since she was used to this kind of ex- atmosphere earlier in her childhood her house was also like that wherever where she grew up her mother and father's house was also like that so she didn't uh, you know took anything to heart she took it as easy because she believed like that from the beginning that everyone's life is going to be like that there is a lot of domination people will try to uh, put their own words so she got just used to it there was no retaliation or resentment at that time it did not affect her much and uh, in the early days of her marriage there was no much kind of an emotional connection also between her and the uh, her husband and they were mostly aloof and they were busy with everyday works there was no kind of an any kind of an emotional attachment was not there between them they were just being there that's it and um, because of his uh, not interest or uh, dislike towards the marriage he also used to abuse her and you know there was lot of suffering also that she uh, he um, uh, inflicted on to her but she took everything with uh, ease because she thought life is like that now 8 months into her marriage her father in law died died he left his body due to some uh, physical ailment uh, it suddenly happened and now with his father in with her father in law's death the pandora's box of her domestic problems opened up you know everyone in her family started to um, father in law side family started to blame her that it's because of her only our father in law died and uh, is just only 8 months after marriage and there was a lot of grudge and you know hatred that was shown towards her by her um, you know husband side's family members and uh, the patient god was going through a lot of uh, emotional turmoil at that time she was hardly 15 years old and um, with that happening and with so much tantrum so much abuse going on in the family she became pregnant when she was 16 years old with her first child before that uh, she had a miscarriage and at that time of pregnancy her state of mind was so not inclined towards the well being of baby she was herself very confused on why people were behaving with her the way they were you know everyone was blaming her because of her only her father in law died everyone was blaming her the reason because she is the source and she is the one who is responsible for all the despair that's happening in the family so she is not understanding the circumstances of why her uh husband's family are behaving like that and why her own family is behaving like that so there was lot of fear inside her about her own future and how she has to come out of that situation that she was in and that took a toll on her pregnancy and she had episodes of seizures epileptic episodes happened to her during pregnancy and uh, there was gestational hypertension also during the time of pregnancy and that resulted in preterm baby the baby was born in the 8th month now with a patient god had a c section delivery and she was very weak after the delivery uh, all she was doing was she was just feeding the child that's it 
and the rest uh, her mother took care of it and by the time she got to her uh, you know physical she got her strength and she was discharged from the hospital she brought her baby along with her and her mother in law instructed her that uh, the baby should be left with the patient god's mother's side family because it's a family tradition that uh, the baby grows at least for uh, at least for 5 years she the baby should grow in the side of the mother's side family uh so the with a lot of difficulty both emotionally and physically patient got gave her first child to her mother there was a lot of um, you know she was going through a lot of misery emotionally and mentally there was no support from her husband and neither of from her parents everyone was like you know abusing each other and everything and um, there was no bonding at all with her first child she immediately gave the child to her mother in the first 2 3 months and uh, the her mother took her the, took uh, her first child along with her uh, to her place now at that point of time she patient got had a lot of anger towards her parents because she started to blame them for her marriage because she never she they were the one who fixed the marriage right so she used to blame them for her marriage and there was a lot of misery um, that's why there was a lot of misery and pain in her life it's all because of them and their decision now by that with all this happening she became pregnant second time and um, similarly the sec- uh, with the, you know she was going through the same emotional turmoil during her second pregnancy uh, and uh, she again had gestational hypertension and uh, you know um, she at that uh, during the second pregnancy she you know opened up with her husband there was there was a little bit of emotional connection happening between her and her husband and she told that you know these people are doing something like that and finally you know her husband also observed and everything and they were bonding emotionally so now at the second pregnancy she also again went through gestational hypertension and she was admitted into the hospital by her parents and when her husband uh, went to visit her in the hospital because they were connecting emotionally and he was also you know trying to connect with her and there was a bonding happening um there uh, he went to hospital to visit her without uh, telling uh, his parents and somehow they got upset and uh, that's how their mother in law side family did not visit her now somehow during the time went on an issue brewed up between the patient god and her mother in laws and uh, finally between the family and uh, the patient god's mother she became very furious with the uh, patient god's husband and uh, she abused something with him and uh, then uh, the patient god's husband he became very furious and he said that he'll give divorce to her and uh, he said he's going to leave her now the patient god at this point of time she thought okay things were you know they're tuning up now everything is happening good patient god was you know at the emotional break point at that point of time when she heard that her husband said that i'm going to divorce her now she went through that emotional break point she had no she could no longer take it she hated herself and the circumstances she was in and with that state of mind she jumped into a drivel in the house she went into the back backyard of her house she jumped into a drivel in the house in an attempt to end her life now since there was no water in it she broke her entire spine her entire spine got crushed up and she went uh, into coma for at least one month she was in the hospital now during that time uh, she didn't know what exactly was brewing up between her family and uh, her uh, mother in law side family but um, when she was recovering she came out of coma and she was recovering it was one of uh, her younger brother he came to visit her and uh, uh, because he was very emotionally attached to her there was a lot, lot of empathy and he knows what she was going through in her uh, life after marriage so he came to visit her and somehow he could not visit her and uh, there was a clash that happened between him and uh, her mother in law side family and her husband or something what happened she even she didn't know but that transpired towards him attempting suicide he went to a railway station and he stood in front of the train and he killed himself now that because of that patient god's family were further more furious and they had a lot of grudge and hatred towards her in laws family and uh, disputed with them resulting in a bad blood and now after patient got got discharged from the hospital her husband family got separated and only patient god and her husband were there or mother in law side the whole huge family they left them and they went and started to stay separately now she just started to recover 
and uh, she was left alone with her husband and two kids the second kid was 10 months old now when i asked how she was going through at that point of time she said that she it was a most painful point in her life because she was weak physically and emotionally and her husband resented and hated her even more after the suicide attempt because that you know bursted out the uh, you know furthermore made the things worse to between their families so he said that it's all because of you everything the first uh, suicide attempt uh, because of that only your brother tried to kill himself and this is all happening in our family because of you and you are the sole reason and he completely neglected her and uh, he left her to her own pains and she only had to take care of her child and with her own uh, without any assistance now unable to take care of herself she you know she, because she did not completely recover from the injury she requested her husband to allow her to go to her mother's house to take help now due to the lack of support uh, emotionally there was a continuous stress and distress happening with her she didn't know everyone was venting on her everyone was pointing at her now she didn't know what to do so she needed someone else to point, to vent whatever she was going through now that was someone else became her younger child so she used to beat him she used to you know abuse him everything she used to do on her younger child because she didn't know what was happening with her so she just wanted to vent it on someone so who could who uh, uh, just on someone who would not retaliate on her so that was that younger child who was sitting beside her she used to abuse him beat him and everything show all her anger and frustration on her on him now tragedy continued further when she arrived at her mother's place a twist happened is that her parents put her into house arrest for at least 5 years they took her phone everything and they just put her into house arrest and they prevented and completely bo- blocked her and her kids from meeting their father or their mother in law side family because they were worried like just like her younger son uh, you know uh, died because of suicide attempt they might also do something so that uh, even the girl will die so staying at her mother's place it was very emotionally uh, up, up, uh, very a difficult situation for her because her parents used to emotionally hurt her by abusing her husband in front of her saying that you know he should die he will die some day because he was the reason why her their son died so because he might have done something or said something that resulted in his suicide so listening to this every day the patient got started hating herself and she uh, and also started hating and he and she started showing lot of resentment and anger towards her dead brother and um, felt that it was his death that made her situation worst and uh, when she was staying with her parents house in her parents house she realized that her elder son who is about 5 years old he was not speaking single word unlike her younger child who was also speaking the words and he was making beautiful sentences her elder child was not even speaking one word then uh, she conveyed the same thing to her parents she said that there is something wrong with him is not speaking then her parents uh, counteracted that saying that it happens with a uh, few children uh, the speech will come late don't worry why do you worry for everything but uh, she was very um, keen on knowing why this is happening she was worried that there might be some kind of an issue and later one day while some conversation was happening she understood that her elder child was not able to speak because he was unable to hear and that she identified and with her friends help she visited to a doctor and she came to know that her uh, elder child was suffering from congenital hearing loss a birth defect that has happened during the time of birth that resulted in 85% hearing loss and that's why he was unable to speak because he was unable to hear and the doctor suggested that he immediately needs hearing aid so now learning about her elder son's condition the suffering he was going through and uh, uh, her parents not helping her and her uh, she has no contact with her husband uh, there was no money she was not uh, she was uh, completely stuck somewhere in her life and uh, she was completely worried about the future of her children and all other issues that instigated you know she didn't know what to do she just uh, thought that i'll end my life and she tried to have multiple suicide attempts but uh, she failed in every other attempt but she tried to do multiple suicide attempts now one fine day by chance she through one of her uh, 
common family friends and uncle who came to her house by him she understood that it her husband was actually trying to meet her since a long time he was trying to meet her and uh, her kids since a very long time but it was her father who was stopping him from meeting her and uh, at the time when she first heard that you know her husband was uh, at least trying made an attempt to meet her she felt very happy and uh, she was very li- relieved and she um, you know she thought she could go back to him uh, immediately so and uh, so that he, at least her her son, elder son's health condition will be addressed and uh, their kids future will also be taken care of so she immediately looked for the right time and she escaped from her mother's house with her kids and she went to her husband's place finally she went to her husband's place and a bigger twist was waiting for her her husband was in a living relationship with another woman and uh, he clearly said to the patient god that if you want to stay here then the other woman is also going to stay in the same house and when i asked her how she was how she felt then she said that it was very painful for her because you know um, when she knew that her husband was living with another woman but she was in a con- condition where she can't go back to her parents place and neither she could not die or hurt her- herself because she did multiple suicide attempts and uh, she just suffered in silence and convinced herself thinking that maybe this is my karma and i'll surrender i'll just surrender to what is happening to my life because i need to take care of my children's future and um, at that time patient got one of her neighbors aunt uh, neighboring auntie she came to her and she said that uh, she was a pyramid master and she said that uh, you know she said it in her sentences that uh, you look like you brought a lot of karma with you in this lifetime and she suggested that just do meditation that will ease your journey in this lifetime now patient got thought that how would meditation help her overcome her conditions she was only 25 years old there was lot of relationship issues going on her elder kid is not good her husband is living with someone else her uh, you know her injury of the spine is not completely recovered how will just meditation help me to overcome all these situations what is she talking and she thought uh, and why will tw- I, i in the age of 25 years old do meditation and she just brushed it off and she forgot about it now patient got further uh, started to work on her elder kid she used to wake him up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you know teach uh, letter to him every single letter like for apple she used to take just to teach word apple she used to take 3 to 4 hours just to teach that one word and uh, she also used to teach sari gama paas and all those things repeatedly she used to repeat every single letter multiple times and her uh, elder son used to observe her lips and learn from what she used to do and this used to continue every day and um, while this was happening she started to observe that how his elder son was because she never had a relationship with him he was 5 years with uh, their parents right with her um, patient got parents only he was growing up so when she ha- observed her elder son uh, her elder son was very self centered he was very highly sensitive and he used to never share things unlike her younger son who was very vibrant and uh, like a friend like later she came to know that it was her father's uh, influence he was teaching him you know to do like that to do like this there's a lot of influence on that so she expressed her unwillingness towards teaching such things to her children and uh, she immediately convinced uh, her inconvenience with her father now uh, when this was happening she slowly convinced her uh, husband that you know her son's condition is very serious and um, he needs to help so we need to take him to the a uh, bigger hospital an ent hospital and see what kind of hearing aid we can give to that uh, to her elder son and um, she you know she said uh, so can somehow the husband came with her and uh, there the doctor he really appreciated patient got saying that you know you did right thing by teaching your son all these words and he took uh, patient got's husband to the ward beside and showed that if you know if your wife would not have taught all these things he would have become psychiatric uh, he would have psychological issues like you are seeing the children here they are all suffering because of that now after seeing the reality he patient got's husband you know he woke up and he said that okay i did something wrong let's buy the costliest uh, hearing aid and uh, they you know they uh, took uh, and they, brought, they came with their son back to their home and she observed with her elder son is that he is very active in learning even though she used to wake him up at 3 am in the morning he used to get up and learn with her he never used to complain it seems and even he used to stay late in the night and learn every subjects 
whatever she used to teach uh, with a lot of interest and uh, vigor and a lot of keen uh, quest to learn whatever it is. That kind of attitude was there. And when I, uh, when with her younger son, he was a very happy go lucky child. And he always used to help his elder son uh, with the learning and used to sit beside him in the school and teach him every word uh, by slowly explaining him with the lip movement. So he always supported his elder brother and took care of him even in, a, in the absence of uh, his mother. Now, slowly after a year, um, uh, you know, she her back started aching again. So while this was happening, accidentally she... Uh, had a road traffic accident and uh, uh, that caused injury to both her knees. Now her husband started to resent her and, you know, started to blame her more like you bring something or the other nuisance into the family. If the, your uh, saga to your illnesses won't stop and everything like that, he started to blame her again. Now at this point of life, she was like, she had no other choice. She was like giving up on her life because she thought that, okay, something is happening better, something else was coming into her life. Now, that time she got reminded of this pyramid master who said that meditation will help her. Now she thought that, okay, I'll go and see how I can uh, use this meditational journey to come out of what's happening in her life. And um, at that point of time when uh, she started that, okay, now I'm going to do my meditational journey, she beautifully recited this particular Vemana Shatakam. He's a great master. His name is Vemana. And uh, the meaning of that, uh, what do you say, the shloka is, this verse is that one should not take a stand just like that on any issue. They need to introspect it properly and then they need to take a stand. But once a stand is taken, stick to it and don't leave it because it is better to die than to depart from the stand that you have taken. That is the whole essence of the verse. And she said that I decided that that day I'll start my meditation journey and I'll stick with it. Now she learned meditation from the pyramid master who also told her to, that she should immediately stop eating non-veg. And uh, she used to continuously do meditation for at least 30 minutes a day for uh, 41 days. She advised that she needs to do 30 minutes a day meditation for 41 days. Now the patient got did one hour meditation three times a day. She thought, she said, no, I'll do one hour. And she used to do one hour meditation three times a day. And she increased her meditation hours because she felt there was every day, initial, uh, in, during the initial time, she used to feel a little, little bit of pain and discomfort for the first, uh, uh, at least the, for the first five, six weeks. But after that, she observed that every day the pain started to reduce. The more, so she, because of that personal experience, she herself started to sit for more hours. So whenever the patient got sat in meditation, she asked for forgiveness. This was her motto from the beginning of the, from the beginning time of her meditation. She always used to ask for forgiveness to her in-laws and her respective family in regards to her karma towards them in their past life. She believed in that concept that maybe I did something wrong to them. That's why I'm going through the same experience. So please forgive me. You are not at wrong in anything. I'm just having an experience of what I wanted. So please forgive me. And uh, later, she said that, uh, you know, um, during those 41 days, one of her friends suggested that she needs to, if she will go and do a uh, meditation in the pyramids, the pyramids uh, that are built all over the, um, you know, uh, in India, if you go and uh, do meditation in one of those pyramid center, the healing will happen much faster because there is a group meditation happening. There are a lot of people, the energy vibration will be very high under the pyramid and in the group. So she requested her husband uh, that she will visit the pyramid center. So she went there. And there she saw there was a three-day spiritual tablet workshop that was going on there in that center. And the counselors there were explaining few spiritual tablet concepts like Arisha Dwargas, uh, three types of happiness, labor accountant officer. So there were few concepts that they were telling or explaining to the people there in the pyramid center. And uh, patient guard, she did not frankly, she frankly did not understand what uh, the spiritual tablet is and everything. But she was sitting uh, at a distance and she was listening and writing whatever she understood from what they were telling. And um, when uh, she said that she will, she'll go and listen to those, uh, uh, she would be in that batch and she will learn. Then one of the counselors told her that, you know, you can't directly come and sit into this workshop. You have to do at least first 41 days of meditation because your energy should be right to understand those concepts. And you should stop eating non-witch. 
so she went from there and she started to write whatever she could understand from the distance and uh, later while she while this whole thing was happening gk sir was there and sir observed that this patient god was listening to classes with a lot of interest even from a distance and eventually he called her and asked like this out of this three days what did you understand the patient god conveyed that from one tablet whatever you are speaking i understood that there is never a good luck and bad luck every life situation of ours is planned by us as a part of our learning from the situation so there is never a good luck and a bad luck and she said that after listening to one of the tablets like labor accountant and officer i understood that i am in the labor phase right now there is a lot of understanding that i need so like that she gave her own explanation now after 3 days of workshop gk sir called her he was very happy and uh, he gave the certificate of participation to her and uh, during that uh, sp tab she immediately joined the counseling with sp tablets and when she heard that you know there is pyramid uh, importance of pyramid and full moon meditation she decided okay now i'll implement it and she started to implement the full moon meditation in her regular meditation schedules so she started to be on optimal diet during those full moon days she used to be on liquid diet for 3 days and she used to visit the nearby meditation center and sat in the meditation for 24 hours the first time she sat she started into meditation for 24 hours from 6 am in the morning to 6 am the next day morning and uh, the next day when the patient got came out of meditation she observed that her entire body was full of blisters just like the chicken pox blisters you have it was like that and uh, of course there were a lot of blisters and everything and all these things boils all over her body but she felt that there was a change in her energy pattern and all the, and she could understand internally the the talking was happening the understanding was coming from internally that all these blisters or everything was an indication of the negative pent up energy that is there in her uh, system in her whole um, what do you say energy in her whole body it was vented out into the in the form of blisters and uh, that was coming out of her body in the form of blisters and uh, she asked for forgiveness obviously to the people who she resented and all the ill feelings that she had she always made sure that the forgiveness was the motto and after this was happening she you know while she was uh, all this thing was happening to her the people in the pyramid center they saw her uh, condition and few of the meditators themselves came and asked her that you know this is not good better you take some medication for the blister or something like that but uh, she said that i took a firm decision that starting from the day of meditation she will heal herself only through meditation and spiritual tablets so she stick to it because internally she could feel it she could feel the energy change and everything and she could really feel it so she was very confident on what she was doing and uh, after returning home from the pyramid meditation center her husband was taken aback for what was happening with her the blisters and everything and slowly she requested her husband that you know i want to sit in meditation there is a calling i can feel it um, because i want to sit in meditation there is a lot of negative energy emotions everything that is being pent up inside me so i have decided that i want to sit in meditation for at least 7 hours a day for the next 41 days and uh, she said that please cooperate with me and don't dis- and uh, she asked for his cooperation and not to disturb him for the next 7 hours and to her, her surprise her husband immediately accepted her request and uh, so every day every day she used to get up in the morning early she used to do all her household works cooking packing tiffin sending the kids to home uh, taking care of everything that she used to do she could do in the morning and she used to sit in the meditation from 9 am to 4 pm in the evening and um, the those 41 days patient god was in complete spiritual trance she was completely focused on herself completely she said she even stopped teaching her elder kid those days she was either doing meditation or she was in complete silence and those 41 days she said that she had an intense urge to know about herself who am i why is this happening what is my purpose of life her soul's plan why she did she design her life with all these people around her what was the learning she needed to go through this experience and she wanted to have that right wisdom so that she used to she could burn away the karma that she has brought along with her in this lifetime 
so that intense quest of who am i and that understanding she wanted at that in those 41 days she was in that trance only now during those 41 days meditation towards the end of 41 days as it uh, was ending physically patient got became so vibrant she was looking much younger and beautiful and she was very energetic and she was performing all the daily household chores and still she was doing her 7 hours meditation her husband came to her and said that you you are start you are looking more beautiful i don't know why but uh, you are looking beautiful much uh, younger than you used to be and that completely you know astonished stunned her and amazed her husband also what ha- what kind of transformation that has happened with her and uh, with uh, what she was doing with herself and uh, she then because of, after this she then slowly convey, conveyed to her husband very politely that whatever transformation that has happened to her is purely because of meditation and vegetarianism and requested him to stop eat non veg and become a vegetarian whole and uh, her husband you know he gave a thought about it for a while but immediately he uh said that okay i'll become vegetarian now patient got said uh, at that point of time she said that the moment her husband said that he's going to be vegetarianism she thought that um in that 41 days she has burned at least one fourth of her karma because all the while she was meditating and her husband was only taking care of the kids and you know even her elder son used to sit beside her whenever she was doing meditation and uh, patient got never had any kind of meditational experiences or third eye visions or astral travels or anything like that the only experience she had was she beautifully healed herself and she came out of the physical pain she was having earlier and one more visible change was that her elder son he started to learn things much faster he understood things much faster because when she was doing meditation he used to come and sit beside her and used to do meditation so she felt very happy when uh, these changes were uh, been seen with her elder child elder kid and uh, later she regularly kept in touch with the uh, spiritual counselor senior spiritual counselor and uh, she used to take books and wisdom capsules from them and uh, patient got started reading 12 tablets problems and spiritual solutions these are few of the spiritual tablet wisdom books and uh, after reading 12 tablets she further understood the importance of full moon meditation and the intense shower of cosmic energies in those days and accordingly she made her monthly spiritual planning for five full moon days for five months which included that during the time of full moon days she will sit for longer hours of meditation for seven days that is three days before the full moon on the day of full moon and after full moon and she'll have optimal diet during those times that is liquid diet and staying in silence not only in terms of speaking but also mentally in terms of thoughts also now her first experience in meditation so patient got did her first month of full moon meditation it went well but on the second full moon meditation she felt that someone was touching her she could feel someone was touching her while she was meditating and she heard the voice of her brother who committed suicide and the soul was requesting her to free him this was the sentence that was coming inside her and listening suddenly by listening to that voice and suddenly feeling of that touch feeling having that feeling like someone was touching her she was shell shocked she said that she was in fear because she had never heard of such an experience before and she was only 6 months into meditation and it was unexpected as she didn't know how to react also and what to do but even with that fear and confusion and perspiring sweating all the while she did not come out of the meditation now the patient god's husband who was watching her shivering perspiring and well meditating asked her the reason like what happened now she shared her experience with her husband and it was her husband who gave her the solution that i think you know after your brother committed suicide you always blamed and hated him for all your sorrows maybe because of that he was asking forgiveness from you now patient got felt very happy especially to get that kind of a answer from her husband and uh, patient got all now she could connect the dots she said that she always felt an unknown fear and whenever she used to sit for longer hours of meditation that it used to come sometime or the other so when she read the book you forever then she understood that it was her brother's soul lingering in her aura asking for you know break want to move away so asking for forgiveness now she immediately made a planning for the next six full moon months for forgiveness and um, i asked 
like what is your idea of forgiveness then she said that she explained her idea of forgiveness she in her own words she said that it was my sole plan to be born to my parents to be getting married to my husband and having children and choosing my life design with all the souls as a part of my learning and none of you are responsible for my suffering so please forgive me and i also will forgive you i love myself and will always love you all so this was her motto of forgiveness she could not only speak it but she could feel it and after 6 months she felt her husband sorry her brother's soul got free and moved away she could feel it from her from her auric field she could sense it internally she could feel it that there is i think he moved on or he passed away the forgiveness happened between her and her um, uh, what do you say brother and she was no more in fear because her husband told that earlier he used to fear a lot to even go outside you always used to tell me to come accompany you but i think you are no more in fear you are just going and doing your work on your own so that's how she understood that she overcome fear and that's how there was a you know that kind of forgiveness that happened between her and her brother now i asked what was what was her monthly spiritual planning she used to say that one thing she really firmly believed was that we create our own reality and we are solely responsible for all the sorrows that are happening in our life as much as all the good also that is happening in our life and with that motto she used to get up every day in the morning and she used to do her daily meditations she always uh, wanted to have some kind of art she loved singing so she used to get up in the morning and she herself used to practice and sing uh, you know whatever bhajans she could hear on tv or in radio she used to practice for herself from 5 am to 7 am she, when she came to our session she sang so beautifully she is no less than any other what do you say a professional singer she was amazing and uh, her monthly spiritual planning was also includes silence for few hours in a day she used to involve book reading every day no matter what and her favorite books are 12 tablet book she said even though i read it once i used to read it five times six times until it enters into my subconscious mind and uh, other book she loved was problems and Spir- uh, spiritual solutions by uh, spiritual tablets and she read that book for 2 years and implemented everything in that book in her day to day life she not only read she implemented it to the point and this is a wonderful uh, tablet from spiritual tablets we see if we can have time we'll one day go through this uh, particular book which tells about planning having honesty in life will power patience and stability now other than that she used to do whatever uh, service that she can do by teaching uh, whatever she has learned or going through vegetarian rallies or donating money if she can or teaching to spiritual children whatever or whatever technical help that is required whatever she can do she did it as a part of her spiritual science service and she always used to listen to uh, audios by patri sir and great masters and uh, she used to have, do compulsory her full moon meditations so this is her monthly spiritual planning other than her regular materialistic planning she used to do this mandatorily and this was on the Hmm, list every day now the fruits of meditation when it comes to children she said when she read that book direct and indirect evidence from spiritual tablets she made her elder son to sit in meditation and explained him to that because he was suffering from this congenital defect she made her son to sit in the meditation and explain to him that one should never hate themselves or their circumstances the physical illnesses he was suffering was planned by him as a part of his karmic learning and no one is responsible for it always ask for forgiveness be grateful for your life and be happy with whatever you have that is very important and she used to repeat this thing to her son every day and uh, she all she made sure that she took him to trekking encouraged him to spend more time in nature and she encouraged him to teach meditation even though he was unable to speak properly there was a slurred speech but still she motivated him to take meditation classes or wisdom concepts whenever uh, there was sessions that were happening in their neighborhood and she taught him bhagavad gita shlokas we talked with him when she came when he came to the session is an amazing kid and is doing very well in his life right now because uh, he slowly slowly improved and uh, he got 5000 rank in his neat exam he scored 80% in his engineering uh, uh, 
um, what do you say, um, uh, in his engineering, and he is right now working as uh, you know software engineer in one of the uh, MNCs in uh, Hyderabad. So he's beautifully settled, and she really worked with her children beautifully. And uh, with her husband, she said that after seeing so many changes in her wife and children, patient God's husband started meditation by himself. He, no one forced him. He himself started it. And uh, one fine day he came, she said that uh, her husband came to her and asked that, you wish for anything else that you want in your life, just ask it. And because you never asked me for anything, just ask it. And she slowly conveyed to her husband that, why don't you shift the other woman who is staying in the house with them? To another house. I have no other issue. It's your personal thing, but why don't you just change, shift her? And he agreed to her and immediately shifted her, but slowly, within a couple of months, he came out of that relationship. Now, she said that the patient God's meditation has become a miraculous gift because she thought she initially came to meditation just to heal herself from out of her physical pain, but it also helped in mending her relationships with her husband, her children, her in laws, and also her with her parents. So this is uh, in uh, quick, the summary of her life. And uh, just to end up, we can say that every life is eventually touched by tragedy. No one is exempt from sufferings, but by acknowledging rather than hiding it, we will make the journey easy. Her journey of going forward in life with forgiveness, acceptance, surrenderance, gratitude is a beautiful example that by patience and faith, everyone can make their journey fruitful. As uh, Gandhiji said, if you want to see the change, be the change, right? So this was one of my most touching uh, case study that uh, I uh, got to know while uh, working with spiritual tablets. So I got an opportunity to share with you all because this is a wonderful case study. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we'll continue with our meditation. We'll discuss uh, something about it after the meditation. Yeah. Thank you. Your masters take a comfortable position after listening to a wonderful experience. <laughs> you are all engrossed in that. Let that thought dwell in your heart. Yes, I can do it. Meditation is the in thing. <laughs> So closing the eyes gently, take few deep breaths, start with exhalation, let go, in breath, deep and long, hold for few seconds, then exhale, hold for few minutes, Few seconds, comfortable level. Inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Deep and slow breathing. Relaxation happens. Let go all the tension, stress from every tiny muscles. You have to make me a co host so that no issues. Relax the whole body, taking your awareness from 
toes to the top of your head. Just glance through. Energy flows where your awareness goes. That's all. Feel wherever you have some pain or any part demands your attention. Just be there. Like holding a baby. Be there. Just give attention. Give auto-suggestion to relax. Giving assurance, yes, I am with you. Every cell is connected with your consciousness. Relax. which includes breathing practices, several things. You can get enlightened using any technique. These 112 represents 112 energy centers, in fact. Our seven planes of existence, seven chakras, each has 16 connections, seven into 16 are connected. So once Shiva said, O oh, Radiant One, this experience may dawn between two breaths. After breath comes in and just before turning out the beneficence. When your breath comes in, observe normally breathing. Just observe. For a single moment, for a thousand part of a moment, there is no breathing. Before it turns up, before it turns outward. One breath comes in, then there is a certain point and breathing stops. Then the breathing goes out. When the breath goes out, then again for a single moment, for a part of a moment, breathing stops. Then breathing comes in. Mindfulness, awareness, Witnessing. Before the breath is turning in or turning out, there is a moment when you are not breathing. In that moment, the happening is possible. Because when you are not breathing, you are not in this world. Understand this. When you are not breathing, you are dead. You are still, but dead. But the moment is of such short duration, you never observed it. Breath coming in is rebirth. Breath going out is death. The outgoing breath is synonymous with death. 
the incoming breath is synonymous with life so with each breath you are dying and being reborn the gap between the two is of very very short duration but key sincere observation and attention will make you feel the gap then nothing else is needed you are blessed you have known the thing has happened you are not to train the breath Just live it as it is. You may ask, why such a simple technique? Yes, it looks so simple. Such a simple technique to know the truth. To know the truth means to know that which is neither born nor dies. to know that eternal element which always is you can know the breath going out you can know the breath coming in but you may never know the gap between the two so try it now right now do it suddenly you will get the point and you can get it it is already there everything is already there except a certain awareness so how to do this first become aware of the breath coming in watch it forget everything just watch breath coming in the very passage the moment when the breath touches your nostrils feel it there then let the breath move in move with the breath fully conscious when you are going down 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 with the breath do not miss the breath do not go ahead do not follow behind just go with it remember this do not go ahead do not follow it like a shadow be simultaneous with it your breath and consciousness should become one the breath goes in you go in only then will it be possible to get the point which is between two breaths it may not be easy so okay move in with the breath then move out with the breath in ah uh, in gap how gap watch totally with your breath watching the gap between two breaths buddha tried this particularly this method 
That's why this method became a Buddhist method. In Buddhist technology, it is known as Anapanasati Yoga. And Buddha's enlightenment was based on this technique. Only this. Just do it. Go on practicing breath consciousness, breath awareness. Suddenly, one day, without knowing, you will come to the interval. As your awareness will become keen and deep and intense. As your awareness will become bracketed. The whole world is bracketed out. Only your breath coming in or going out is your world. The whole arena of your consciousness. Suddenly, you are bound to feel the gap in which there is no breath at all. When you are moving with breath minutely, when there is no breath, how can you remain unaware? With your keen observation, you will suddenly become aware that there is no breath. The moment you will come when you will feel that the breath is neither going out nor coming in. The breath has stopped completely. Shiva says, in that stopping, the beneficence, the moment. Just be a witness, Sakshi. Everything, the life is between the two breaths, between two thoughts, between your eyebrows, between two breaths. Just be an observer, witness, such. Just be in that moment, every moment.
Shiva said, when in worldly activity also, keep attentive between two breaths and so practicing in a few days, be born anew. Whatsoever you are doing, keep your attention in the gap between the two breaths. But it must be practiced while in activity. We have just did a similar technique. Now there is only this difference that this has to be practiced while in worldly activity. Do not practice it in isolation. This practice is to be done while you are doing something else too. You are eating, go on eating, but be attentive to the gap. You are walking, go on walking, and be attentive to the gap. You are going to sleep, lie down, let sleep calm, but you go on being attentive to the gap. Why inactivity? Because activity distracts the mind. Activity calls your attention again and again. Do not be distracted. Be fixed at the gap and do not stop activity. Let the activity continue. You will have two layers of existence, doing and being. We have two layers of existence, the world of doing and the world of being. 
the circumference and the center. Go on working on the periphery, on the circumference. Do not stop it, but go on working attentively on the center also. What will happen then? Your activity will become an acting as if you are playing a part. If this method is practiced, your whole life will become a long drama. You will be an actor playing the roles, but constantly centered in the gap. If you forget the gap, then you are not playing roles. You have become the role. Then it is not drama. You have mistaken it as life. That is what you have done so far. Everyone thinks he is living life. But it is not life. It is just a role, a part which has been given to you by society, by circumstances, by culture, by tradition, by the country, the situation. You have been given a role, that's all. You are playing it, but you have become identified with it. Break that identification. Use this technique. This technique is just to make yourself a psychodrama. Just a play. You are focused in the gap between two breaths and life moves on on the periphery. Karma Chakra rolls on. If your attention is at the center, then your attention is not really on the periphery. That is just a sub-attention. It just happens somewhere near your attention. You can feel it. You can know it. But it is not significant. It is as if it is not happening to you. I will repeat this. If you practice this technique, your whole life will be as if it is not happening to you. As if it is happening to someone. That is the power of witnessing, living as a sati at all times, responding to the situations, not reacting. Friends, with this understanding, let us wake up to a new world of ours. Slowly, slowly start coming back and you are ready. You may take a deep breath, you may move your limbs, whichever you feel comfortable. Then when you are ready, you may place your palms on the eyes and gently open your eyes to the world of infinite possibilities. One. Two, three, 
get ready feeling fine in a wonderful feeling totally recharged rejuvenated refreshed renewed it full of awareness for five may open your eyes with a gentle scintillating smile on your face spreading the joy with an attitude of gratitude to everything that we have that we are to everyone to everything with gratitude to you all thank you thank you thank you loka samasta sugino bhavantu this permission is a beautiful meditation meditation with lot of wisdom thank you <clears throat> friends today's meditation was wonderful and uh, please do come forward share your experiences Dinesh Sanghvi, sir. I think I'm seeing your face first time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> If you have to share anything, welcome also. You may unmute. Namaskar, sir. Atma Vandanam. I'm always here. I'm always here. I'm from I'm New Jersey. Jersey. Yeah, I'm okay. from New Jersey. um usa and i'm always here since day one yeah 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 thank you for sh- showing our yeah. beautiful face and <laughs> spreading your beautiful thank energy you. <laughs> very good experience and p- very peaceful meditation i enjoy all the time and i'm learning out of this yes thank you sir for sharing i'm doing like uh, one and a half year now with the chandra sir good buddha ceo and also i'm part of the book club with uh, chandra mudali and rauli yeah. ma'am right good good i to start a spiritual tablet connection only with chandra sir gk sir's brother sitting in the yeah. park uh, in the pandemic you know where to go so i used to no. listen in the evening <laughs> like I that today i got connect yeah. i wanted to do before but the time is conflict both time is 8:30 you have to <laughs> yeah. choose one how to do that's okay anyone is fine no difference all are <laughs> different paths different uh, space that's all <laughs> but this time we are fortunate because 7:30 and 8:30 so it is little bit overlapping but yeah. still we can do it yes right <laughs> good universe makes it happen you know when we need yeah. it no i if we are willing it happens thank you thank you sir thank you thank you for giving me opportunity thank you thank you dinesh in fact uh, osho users all the vijnana bhairava tandra many may not know people all think of all different things when you think of osho it is not so it's all very high techniques simple but high so i so very few i got from some of my masters and one of the osho follower gave me some wisdom got connected she was my yoga student and 
<laughs> that gave me a lot of opening clarity. <laughs> so a little bit whatever possible I share once in a way like this. <laughs> so everything is nothing to do with me personally. It's all the connections. <laughs> That's all. When we are connected. Chain. <laughs> like how we are sitting today from different parts of the world feeling so close physically so far <laughs> thank you sir thank you everyone wish everyone share their joy Masters. So we're almost finishing week fifth and there's one more week left and uh, we'll be done with our six weeks meditation. So I really want to listen to your experiences. What were you? Yes, Mother Maria. Yeah. You can unmute Mother Guru. Can you unmute? Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, actually. Um, so, it was like a very nice meditation session today. Like, you know, last uh, four or five days, I was, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it was uh, not happening in the way, um, like, you know, the mind was all over the place. But, uh, you know, today was very nice. You know, I did not feel like uh, coming out. But I had to come out because, like, you know, I thought, like, I need to listen to the, you know, question and answer session, actually. So, but um, overall, like, it was a very nice session. So, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for sharing your joy. <laughs> See, all, some sannyasis, some masters go to Himalayas, but... They remain, as you said, no, don't feel like coming out. But we are in this world, we have to come out. <laughs> so those who do not want, will have to go to Mount Kailas and sit there. <laughs> then we are not living the life <laughs> on this planet, right? The MS and vibrations, that's fine. But <laughs> then you are living on this uh, physical world. Yes, we have to shift. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Only without getting attached. That's all. Little by little. <laughs> we can then spread the joy. Right. Okay, Masters. I wish you to come forward and share. If... Yeah. So, that looks... Okay. Yeah, Chakriti, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, divine morning, all masters. Uh, I wanted to uh, share as well as ask one query uh, that uh, the situation of the patient God in this uh, story was really very uh, uh, tragic, like uh, the tight corner, what we call as a, a major deviation point in her life. Uh, she worked very hard to uh, heal herself but uh, uh, could it have could it would have been uh, easy if her uh, near dear ones would have uh, supported her uh, and uh, because uh, during such situations the nasty people and uh, mockers what we call they we fall uh, victim of such people and uh, this causes hindrance in the healing uh, of such conditions and uh, the patient got a uh, can become added uh, to uh, uh, drugs or uh, what we call alcohol, smoking, etc. So, uh, can the uh, healing be more faster if many of her and her ones would have supported her yeah. instead of instead of blaming her because they all were normal and uh, she was a victim of her uh, ill health. So I just wanted to ask this uh, query that uh, would these factors would have helped her to heal faster and easier? 
positive support of her uh, near dear ones? Oh, positive support of near dear ones will definitely help in the healing process much better. But I don't though think so. Got, though she uh, she got the support uh, later, but uh, if uh, she if they all would have supported her uh, from the very beginning, uh, would the healing be easier and faster for her? She would have not faced all the uh, blister coming up and all those suicidal attempts and all that. <clears throat> I think we should see this whole journey of her in a very different perspective. The perspective that she went through that journey because she understood about forgiveness. It was very difficult, whatever the journey that she went through, because of course, uh, you know, support from the near and dear ones, if they would have come, her journey would have not been the same way it was. And she clearly said that this whole, whatever event that has happened with her in her life, if she truly believes that it was a learning for her to understand what forgiveness is, what gratitude is. And she truly believed in those two concepts in whatever the journey she went through. And it's not more about healing or whatever she went through, but it was an emotional or an intellectual understanding that she wanted. That was more important. And, yeah, but uh, uh, that that would have uh, that could have come even from her near dear ones, no? Because uh, uh, we, uh, we we have uh, read many books that uh, we come with our soul plan. So the uh, the family is one of the example that you can come out of whatever situation that you are in, even without the help of your near dear ones, if you believe in yourself. It's not mm -hmm. necessary that you will get help every time. That's why this story is so unique. Yeah. For me. Maybe it's most of the time <laughs> Yeah. Probably let me add a few points. Yes. Yeah. See, we heard the case study. In mm -hmm. post-mortem, we are asking questions, right? Mm -hmm. Let me ask this question. Do you think if she had the support of people, would she have got into that situation in the first place? Well, uh, she could have been a victim of this situation, this tight corner. But the severity would have been less if uh, her uh, family members would have supported her uh, totally, emotionally, uh, right from the beginning. But if they would have supported, she wouldn't have had those difficulties. No, the she would. Thing started. What is the starting point? It is her father, right? In the way she was brought up. Hmm. Then being pushed into marriage at the age of 16, she is becoming a mother. Hmm. Right. So it is somebody influencing her, or from spiritual tablets perspective, she has created a plan for herself to undergo various learnings. And okay. in the process of learning, she has started meditation very young. And by the time she was 35, she had resolved all her problems in life, including yeah. her son being holding a very good job. The yeah. son who would have under normal. So that is the perspective with which we should look at the case study. Yeah. She had selected us. Rather than becoming plan. analytical about it. Yeah. She had, uh, she had selected a tougher, a very tough uh, soul plan. Uh, so uh, you yeah, I got it, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, each one of us have our own soul plan, but we give up. Yeah, we give up. Yeah, yeah, journey. yes, yes. That so our uh, journey is so beautiful that if you be patient, you be consistent, and you have faith, exactly, the journey is yeah. gonna. Yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. You just need to believe in yourself. And she had yeah. to go through all those situations where she was like she fed up. You know, forget about drugs and alcohol. She tried to kill her self at least 10 to 15 times then yeah, she and, used uh, to kill her <laughs> as she tried to you know swallow hair also she didn't know what yeah. to do she had poison she did nothing happened she used to you know she cut her hair and she swallowed her hair also it seems all possible ways she tried then she surrendered to the situation that she was in and then her journey yeah. started
Yeah, even in Bhagavad Gita, it has uh, been said that uh, once you surrender, the path becomes easier. Yes. So no, it all will. Factors... There is the resistance. The moment you have surrendered, you have anyway you have eliminated the resistance. Yes. Yes, sir. Absolutely right. Yes. Very beautiful story, sir. Just by hearing, listening to such story, we gain strength. Yeah, that, I, mean, uh, it, I would uh, yeah. only use the word instead of story. This is a reality. In life. Yeah, real, real. Yes, it is, it is reality. And uh, the very interesting thing is, suppose she had, you see the way the uh, spirituality looks at it. We have gone through the 10 traffic signals in the first yeah. uh, session, right? Suppose yeah. she had not undergone that experience and gained that wisdom, it would have probably come back to her in life with much more added botherance, much more added botherance. That is what she would have come back. <clears throat> so the lesson for people like us who are listening to the experience is do not leave an opportunity that knocks on your door, however tough it may be. If you think it is tough and then give it up, it will come back to you with compound interest. Yes, yes. That, that is the key underlying message, which yes. she, through her meditation, through the guidance of GK sir and some of the other spiritual masters, yeah. And her own experiences while meditating, she got those messages and she was able to help us. That's yes. the basic takeaway, at least for a person like me. That is the takeaway I'm getting from there. See, I mean, I can sit dejected in life with yeah. every small situation that hits me. One. And here it is actually, a, it looks like a relay race of uh, challenges. Yeah. Right? Every single person, yeah. every single stage, the complexity is increasing. Yeah. If only so, she, must if have only become she a, had the support. Uh, sorry. If sorry. only she had the support of, uh, as you said, if <laughs> then the story would not have come here at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, without the yes, sir. yes, so and without the us. support, she, yes, yeah. sir. so for us also, and, uh, we got that, it like that. What has oh. to happen only will happen. <laughs> we stay, no Bhagavad Gita. That is it. <laughs> and now, spiritual tablet also says, if so many people are hearing to that story, it means they have attracted that story here. And there is a message for each and every one participant from that story. That is how the universe responds to our thoughts. And that is how we influence the universe with our thoughts, collectively yeah. and individually. So these are all the lessons that are underlying, which for a person who is thinking logically, he will say, I don't believe. But the spiritual side of it actually explains. It has got an explanation to the whole habit. It's like a diamond, you know. To become a diamond, it has to go through a lot of heart beating. Right? Uh, now she must have become a stronger, a much stronger uh, person than uh, earlier. And now she she's so ready that she can overcome all types of obstacles in her life. Like any type of yeah, she, obstacle she can work on. She can. She is a counselor yeah. in one of the languages. Very beautiful, sir. Very nice. Thank you, sir. That's why a hard rock has become a diamond. <laughs> That's it. Everyone can become like that. That is the lesson we that are getting. <laughs> we can shine. 
just little bit we have to do as today's meditation nothing only just watch the gap 24 hours you see what happens <laughs> miracles right little things count that's the lesson i be learning little little things from anyone <laughs> not me my humble suggestion to everyone would be now we listen all the sessions that we have attended till date right and see how those sessions or the wisdom that has been delivered how it plays a role in the case study that we have done. try to create a linkage you will get the practical implication as well as how you can utilize this to your own advantage in life namaste sir uh, thank you my one question i have is okay um, this is a story that is true in many households of andhra pradesh and other parts of india too okay um, my question is there are um, let us look at it at a, you know a plane above the family there are many players father mother the the in laws the husband and a lady who came into the picture the kids now out of all these actors if this lady is preparing a soul plan did she know all these actors while preparing a soul plan that hey you come and do this for to me and i do this to you you come and do this to me like that have is it all uh, you know agreed upon before she taking birth that written into the soul plan yes because the way the relationships when it comes to the soul plan works is she has wanted to undergo certain experiences the soul now that requires a scenario it requires participation by other souls the other souls who are willing to participate in providing that experience are the souls who have a desire to take away that part of life so that becomes the linkage between the two of them okay i want to learn how to be angry because i have been so soft in my previous life that i have been a victim now i want to get the energy of being the dominant cat right and there is somebody who is willing to provide me the assistance of playing the role of being dominated now that becomes part of the soul plan we will agree to it before we collectively come to this that is the beauty of understanding it from a spiritual perspective mm-hmm. so i create it i have experienced i have gained my wisdom i am satisfied that is sitting in my soul as this that's the way the spiritual angle will look at it instead of okay my materialistic world you did to me they do that is the other thing mm-hmm. and we can even go ahead and make ourselves miserable i have another question in the similar context um in our lives why do people appear for a period of 3 or 4 years and make a big disruption in life and leave disappear not a not a death you know they they have a separate life and then you know you are forced to take a, into one corner of the life okay they are there only for 3 years in your life but they cause a major disruption and then they leave you are attracted to your of life because you want to learn something you want to learn something so you have attracted them they have come created the situation for you to learn and it's all okay. it's just like amitabh bachchan played a, a, a role in kooli and then he played in diva they are not the same roles but the character is the same the, who played it. 
So that's the same way our life goes on. So yes, you have attracted, you created that. So he came, he did his role and he has gone. So um, then uh, for you to attract a person to do a harm to you in your previous life, have you caused a harm to that person so that you Quite are trying likely. to learn an, learn an experience here? The answer here is yes and no. It is quite likely you have created or you have chosen a particular experience out of the 35 divine experiences that we keep talking about. Mm -hmm. What are the perspective of that? Okay. Okay, thank you. Right. Only somebody. Yeah. So tomorrow we have a new guest speaker, you know. Murli, you had a question. Murli Mohan. Thank you for uh, uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, for the great presentation uh, and the journey which we are uh, taking into uh, different levels. Parameshwar ji, namaste. And the next one that I would like to say that uh, in the day day one of book club, or still I remember that Naina Madam had excellently uh, described about the turmoil and suffrage of Louise Haley and where she had realized after having having uh, suffered a lot that uh, last stages she went to she happened to um, go there to uh, to one church where the, the teachings of the pastor somebody <coughs> has influenced her and she realized what is life and what should be done whether mistakes pertains to her whether mistakes uh, because of uh, the suffrage and whatever is there is uh, is because of because of her only, not for others. And similarly, uh, today's uh, the Ravali Madam also had ni nicely described all the things uh, about the uh, person uh, who is in our case study, and uh, the same thing happened. After having a lot of turmoil and suffrage, she came back and she was, in both the cases, they were lucky enough to have had the uh, spiritual master, something like that, or uh, teachings they have changed, they realized, self-realized, and whatever they whatever they have suffered a lot and everything, uh, and they realized that they are, they are not the sufferers, suffrages or sorrows, but merely past experiences. So we had to plan our way and how to come out of this one and uh, we, we should always be with us and uh, to uh, to have this uh, beautiful life with us only uh, and uh, both uh, in both cases they have surrendered surrendered uh, to themselves and started loving them uh, and uh, started uh, forgiving self and also others in a beautiful way these people are very very, very lucky people. And today I'm feeling that I am a very lucky person. I had, I have an opportunity to be with you. And, and I small want to correction, sir. And also, One yes, small sir. correction, Murali, sir. Yes, sir. There is no factor called luck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. This is what you have to learn. That is not luck. What? You create your destiny. That's all. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> that is that is true, sir. That, that is true, sir. I, it happened, but because I'm I'm at the 65 years, that through my friends Sham Prasad, a very a smiling person is there in our yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, hotel members. Uh, he had only introduced me. He's a nice uh, uh, and he's a nice person. He is Ajata Sitru. He doesn't have any enemies, something like that. All this since I'm childhood days, and uh, he was my classmate actually. Always a pleasant person. Uh, 
uh, now feeling that i had uh, already uh, have had uh, such a training in the earlier days something like that you born like this something like that uh, with a lot of peace and pleasantness huh? so actually in that way i am uh, uh i said that i am lucky enough to have been <laughs> i know you are going to say that <laughs> in that way in that way. it's a plus i am so, plus yeah 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 Stop sir uh, like uh, whatever <laughs> change uh, the word change your life <laughs> sir uh, yesterday also also sir, sir sir first time i uh, i heard that uh, actually uh, if everybody says that uh, i have suffered uh, these mistakes i have committed these mistakes uh, and uh, Uh, henceforth, it should be termed as past experiences only. This is not the whatever we suffered. They are past experiences only. That has uh, solution be like anything, sir. It has brought me hundred percent happiness. Henceforth, I should not say that uh, mistakes. This should should be uh, deleted from my dictionary. 